Hi, this is Prometheus, and we're giving you a breakdown of one of my offenses I really like to, to use, and that's a single back big. Single back big, the reason I like it a lot is because of the flexibility. I'm able to go ahead, I've got balance on both sides of the, of the line of scrimmage. I've got two tight ends, and you don't really give a towel on what you're going to be doing against your opponent. They really don't know which side you're going to be favoring, where you're going to be throwing. Uh, so li I like the balance of it. Also, you can flip the plays without really giving a towel to your opponent. There's some real subtle... Uh, adjustments that might you might show but your opponent really is not going to know what you're doing um, the, the standard off or audibles I like to do is I like to do the play action stretch primarily because of that angle route with that outside wide receiver in the red uh, that toast man coverage uh, you really can get some great separation of the cutout uh, it's a great uh, man beater and also if they decide to go in a zone you have a comeback route on the other side against the cover three and then you have uh, a tight end that's coming across the middle and you can you can obviously do something else with the other tight end. Uh, tight end under, I like that because it's stocked out. I can flip to each side and then you have a tight end that's doing a drag underneath. A uh, halfback stretch, I like this particular play primarily because it can run to each side of the field and the blocking is really superb. And if you click hike, it's very effective. And then a halfback draw. Uh, you got to have a halfback draw in your audibles. What I like about this is it's one of the unique halfback draws, the halfback pump audible draw, meaning the quarterback is going to fake like he's going to throw the ball, and then actually you do a draw play. What makes this unique is that it, it's the action. Now, other plays I'll be featuring uh, in this particular set is the halfback counter. I'm also going to be featuring uh, the ace tight end drag, ace posts, tight end under, obviously one of my, uh, one of my, my standards. Curl flats, uh, you probably all know about uh, that. Uh, wide shallow cross. Plank across, which is a play I'll be using initially in the very set. Very easy reads, very effective play. Uh, and then um, other plays is the X follow. I like that because it's a good bait play. Uh, and then the X under, which is another good bait play. Uh, and then finally the O1 trap, which is a good effective running play if you can make the right cut. So uh, if you like this kind of content, if you like uh, people giving you tips and showing those in real life game, uh, game plays, hit the like button for me. Let me know if this is something you like. If you have any comments, if you have an issue with like uh, music I play in the background or my microphone, let me know. Any kind of feedback you give me is great. Thank you for all my subscribers and I hope this helps you elevate. So we're going to be playing Hollywood 500 and he's rolling with the Carolina Panthers and I'm using the Arizona Cardinals. Um, now the reason why I want to use a single back uh, uh, play, uh, the uh, big play, primarily because I, they're very simple reads, reads that I need to make uh, to be able to uh, uh, make my right throws when it comes to making throws. And I like the balance uh, of the running. Um, so got lucky here on this particular set, uh, this particular defensive set was the man uh, able to get a pickoff. So the first read I've got is I'm always going to go ahead and take one of my wide receivers and primarily put them either on a drag or an out. Now, if I put them on a drag and they're all wide open, they fall back in the zone, I'm going to hit the drag. I'm going to try to hit the drag as much as possible. And the good thing about the way you can do these plays is you can either go, you can flip the dra drag in each, each, either side, forcing your opponent to defend the drag from both sides. Now, this is the 0-1 trap. And what's interesting about this play is all you have to do is do a, a, a quick cut on the outside of the pulling blocker. And generally what you're going to do is going to be able to pick up a lot of yards. Uh, I went into lab mode with this play and I was able to pick up 48 yards uh, in one drive just running up primarily. So um, on this next play, I went ahead and went back with the flank across, looking at my first read, the dragging wide receiver, but I noticed the coverage was different. It looked like a cover six backed off. So the back, the back off the coverage, should the flat should be wide open, and that's the, the play that I took. And I was able to pick up a nine yard uh, shot on this particular part of the play. So uh, back to the run again, <clears throat> and I decided to go with the uh, counter weak. And um, really, in all reality, you know, the, the blocking on Arizona is just kind of weak. It's really not that great. So uh, if there was a better team, I probably would be able to pick up some more yards on it, but got stuff for just basically minimum gain or just no gain on that play. So the next play that came out is the play action stretch corner which that corner, that red angle route, actually destroys man coverage. But as you can see, as men were backed off, so what I did is I hot routed into a deep out uh, on the other side. 
and I was able to hit that because you can either do a hook or a deep out. You want to make sure your opponent knows that they're going to get penalized for actually taking their men off. So I came back under with a halfback counter trap, uh, and we've got two, the tackle and the guard are both pulling and trying to go ahead and run up the middle, and uh, his linebackers are there to clean up. So on this next play, this is the Colts under, the X under. And what's interesting is that one, um, that corner post uh, tight end route. And this really kind of destroys uh, zone coverages and man coverages with that route. But I was really focusing on that corner post route. My first read should have been to the drag and maybe the comeback route. But I was really fo focusing on Spiri. And in this particular play, uh, the linebacker fell back in the zone and actually threw the ball too early. Should have waited, waited for the cutback. I probably wouldn't be able to get that. So that's the one thing you could do with any kind of offense. you got to make sure that you're not forcing plays because when you're forcing plays, you make a lot of mistakes. Now, my opponent, Hollywood 500, ran a very simple offense. Uh, he quick hiked. So he, as soon as quickly we got the line of scrimmage, he was running the ball. He ran a lot of play action. Um, so he made any kind of blitzes ineffective, and he did a lot of comeback routes. Um, on this particular play, he made a great play with the, the corner. <clears throat> he came right back to it again, pretty sure the same play, and then LaFell was like a, like a beast and got inside. So I'm down 7 to nothing, getting the ball back, and I'm going to stay with the ace. Uh, I'm just going to stay with that uh, single back big formation. Uh, because that's going to be the formation that's going to get the ball on the field because they've got the balance. But what I wanted to do is go right back to the Colts under, um, and that uh, corner post with the tight end is, is the third read. So uh, i got to be looking for uh, the drag route first, and the corner released, and I threw the ball a little bit too late and fell right into coverage, and that's why I didn't catch it. So came back to the flanker uh, cross. Once again, the read is to go for the uh, drag underneath. Uh, that was wide open, but I decided to go ahead and take a shot up, up, up to the post, and that was wide open. This is um, one of my uh, shotgun single back sets. Uh, that was just a street pattern went down the middle. So uh, this guy's been uh, basically falling back in coverage. I decided to hit him with a draw, and in this particular situation, he brought in about six on a, um, on a blitz, so I was stuffed on that run. So second and 13. <clears throat> Back to uh, the uh, Colts on the cross, and I threw right back into coverage again. So I was just getting a little bit flustered during this series, primarily because I wasn't making the right reads. I wasn't just settling down a little bit. What, decided to go with the ace post, and I took uh, Hauser and put him on a whip route. I was looking for him to get released underneath, and he once again came with some pressure, and I just couldn't get the ball off. So fourth and 13, um, just felt pressure to actually go for it. Figured he'd be trying to go for uh, the streak, so I took a post on the other side with Fitzgerald and was able to pick up the first down. So settled down a little bit on offense and came back with the X foul. And on that coverage, uh, basically your first read is a tight end on the drag route. Your, your second read would be the, the dig, and then the third read would be the tight end streak. Um, anytime you go with a run play, it's always best to go ahead and do a quick hike right away. So this stretch play. I was able to go ahead and pick up a couple of yards because his defender didn't come off that block quick enough. And then I went to the Y shell cross with the back off coverage. You're going to go with the first read is going to be the dragon tight end. Second read will be the dig. And the third read will be the wide receiver post. As you can see, the dig was wide open because he was using a lot of cover three. Um, went back to the stretch, flipped the play, and then I quick hiked it. And I... Uh, the blocking on here was really good. He, he doubled up on that, that defensive end, and the corner didn't come in for the tackle. So got to the goal line, and I like to use a lot of uh, uh, pistol full house uh, runs. They're just very effective for me. So he got back in offense. He had basically a minute and, and 55 seconds, and he just started just dotting me up. Uh, he was catching me in on uh, unbalanced sets. I had to, to man align my people over, so got me with a good run right here. Uh, came back another play action play. He was able to go ahead and hit a corner route. That was actually a really good play. He really threw the needle on that one back again uh, with a run. <clears throat> able to pick up uh, a few yards on that one. Uh, tip ball on that. Third and four. Once again, tried to fire. Almost picked it off. 
And here's the ballsiest play I saw. A toss play on fourth and six. He could have scored. I think a smart play uh, in that situation is to take the points, but he went for the, for the touchdown and he got it. So a very ballsy play by him. So my goal here in this kind of a drive is just to get points. And um, I was able to go ahead and hit him on some deep angle routes, deep corner routes with the tight end. Came back again with another deep, uh, deep uh, corner route with the tight end because he was manning me up. Uh, and I was able to get in the field goal range and get my three points. So uh, going into the second half, I'm down by, uh, down by four points. All I, all I really need is just get a touchdown and just try, try to stay in front of them. So went ahead with the play action corner and uh, the, that angle route's a man beater. And I just made a bad decision. I actually threw into the direction. Uh, his user really wasn't that good. Uh, he wasn't able to read that. I uh, went ahead and audibled into uh, the uh, tight end under, uh, and he was able to hit the, uh, the tight end on the other route. So I started following my reads a little bit more, as opposed to trying to force plays or routes that I was enamored with. Uh, just got blocked up on that. Came out with curl flats, basic concept. Watched his defender. His defender went to the flat, so I took the curl. And Fitz just got tackled on that because it just wasn't using my wiggle sticks. Went ahead and audible to the other side. Uh, see, the key to, to having a good run game is, is quick hiking. You just can't let someone pass and set up the defense. So, first read on this is that this is flanker quarter. You're going to have to hit the uh, flanker underneath. If it's, if it's man coverage, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, that was a bad read. Well, actually, it really wasn't a bad read. It was just a bad pass, and that, that safety came down and got me. So, I was got myself in a hole a little bit here. Uh, he started rushing the ball. Got a really good pickup on that. Quick hiking me on offense and um, just running the ball left and right. Came back with another toss. Was able to go ahead and get the corner. Uh, he was really beating me up um, on these runs, so uh, I was having some difficult times. So then I started zoning him up a little bit and just gave up, dropped uh, dropped the interception there. Uh, he came back with a hook route, so I just started noticing he started to do a lot of hook routes. So came down uh, with uh, with those tosses. And I went with a play called Aggie Cloud Star. And what's unique about this particular play is that on the left-hand side, you've got that automatic purple zone. Most of your, your um, the defenders won't go into it. And sure enough, he, he tried to hit a comeback route, and I was able to go ahead and pick it off of Peterson. Now I get the ball back. Back in the 20, and I'm going to use tight end unders. And with backed up coverage, basically what you're going to do is your first read is going to be the wide receiver out. And your second read is going to be the tight end drag. So wide receiver out uh, is going to be your first read, and then tight end drag will be your second read. He's got the backed off coverage. I was able to go ahead and hit the out. The out was wide open. And once again, I can't do anything with uh, the Fitzgerald. Decided to do a draw. This is a pump draw, and actually got some pretty good blocking in that because he dropped a lot of people. Came back uh, to the uh, stretch play, and was able to get some good run on the inside. Uh, and pick up the first down with that. So we're gonna we're gonna come back with the full uh, the flanker cross, and um, I also tied it tied into a slant just to kind of give it a little bit different look because he was playing that right side of the field, uh, and I was able to go ahead and do that. It hit the, uh, the, the slant. Not a very good smart play primarily because his defender was over there, and I could have got the ball picked off. Went back to play action stretch corner, and on um, press coverage. Um, Basically, you want to kind of look for hitting the outside. Now, this particular play, I had an idea that Sperry was going to be wide open, and this was a streak that actually was able to pick up a really, really big play on that. So that was a bait play. Uh, went back to the stretch play, and uh, his guys came down. He was in a cover two shell. How that wasn't caught in bounds, I don't know. But I wasn't going to challenge it. And uh, in this play, I, I tried to score. I just had a feeling that he was going to stay, he was going to stay back in cover two. So uh, automatic wheel route with Roberts. And the, the flat had to come down to protect that running back. So I was able to pick up a touchdown. So now I'm up 17-14, and it's all about playing defense. And basically, he's been quick, hike, quick hiking, running the ball with uh, either tosses to the left or tosses to the right. Did a little counter right there. He's able to go ahead and stop him for a six-yard gain. Came back again. I was able to go ahead and stop him. He was the hugest tackle of the game right there. I was able to stuff that down. And he came out, hurried up, and I went ahead and took a timeout. Take timeouts when you definitely need to stop the momentum. He was running a hurry up offense. I figured he was going to do some kind of either run or he's going to do those hook routes. 
So he saw my defender, he threw into a hook, and I got the defense. So I went ahead and, and deflected it. So time to melt the clock. Uh, I got out of uh, the big formation uh, and just started running the ball. And just like he was doing, I was quick hiking so I can get the ball, make the ball a little bit more effective. And I was going with uh, more of a big set, uh, like an I-form uh, tight end twin set to pick up first downs. But the key was it was really kept quick hiking the ball and just, you know, taking it, not giving him an opportunity, running the clock all the way down. And when you're winning a game, just go ahead and kneel on it, take your win. So I hope you picked up some good tips on this. I know I kind of rifled through the, kind of the explanation of these plays. I was able to pick up 17 points with uh, Arizona, which is kind of a subpar team. Um, I don't know if you noticed in the background music, I was playing classical music, so you know I'd be interested to get your take on it. Do you guys like the classical music, or should I switch back to electronic techno, uh, R&B type uh, beat rap? But uh, go ahead and take a look at these statistics. One of the things that you can see, um, I was able to convert a lot of third downs. I actually, time of possession was not on my side. Both the quarterbacks played mediocre, two, two interceptions, but that's what you can expect with subpar teams. Uh, if you like this stuff, please hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks once again for all my subscribers, and thank you.